Hello, you all. Welcome back to day one of the Player Networking event. This is the 20th annual Player Networking event here in Miami. I am sitting next to a Hall of Famer. Play, the Player Networking event is designed to assist players with their transition because as Ray Ellis mentioned in our earlier broadcast, it's bigger than the ball. So I am sitting here with somebody that embodies the fact that the life of a player is bigger than the ball. You know, I'm trying to think about that because you were talking about, you know, transition, mm -hmm. which is always interesting because I think you're, once you've done something for so long, you're always transitioning. And if you don't look at it that wow. way, that's then, then that's the hard part because most people say, oh, yeah, well, I'm transitioning out. And I was like, yeah, it's like I've been retired for 12, 13, 14 years and you're still transitioning. You're still trying to figure it out. That's a You're word still right trying here. to work your way through. That is a, okay. So, but guess so, what? We didn't even tell people who you are. Oh yeah. In case you, know. you didn't know, oh, I, this <laughs> is the Will Shields, who just just gave you all. I think that is so rich because, again, as an athlete, your life is very focused on one thing, it right? Is. And and you don't even really think about what's going to happen after this. Because cause you're, you're, since you were a little kid, you always wanted to play the, the game right. of football. That's right. what I want to do. I'm going to do right. this. I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to beat up on this guy. You know, that kind of thing. And so from that point, you're going, you know, once you get there, what happens? You know, right. oh, I, I have an injury or I have to retire or, you know, or things like that. I get cut. Yeah. I got to deal with those issues. And then what do you do next? I mean, you retire. Some people retire at 25. Some yeah. people at 35. It just depends on how long your career is. But then you put your whole life into that. Into that one thing. Into that one thing. Yeah. And then when it's gone, you're going, what do I do next? And so you're constantly transitioning. You're always changing because you never really know. You had that one focus, that one goal, and now it's changed. And at one point, everyone else was scheduling you for that. And so <laughs> now you got to find out, how do I Something schedule myself right, right. for what I want to do next? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's so indicative of life being a journey and not a destination. Yes. And specifically for in the life of an athlete, the goal is the game, yeah. but you have to consider there is more life after that. And it's a hard thing. And I think um, actually it was one of these events. It was mm -hmm. a PE event where I actually learned my biggest lesson about that. Um, I was actually going to go, you know, I was looking to go into the Hall of Fame. I was up. I was, you know, and they, at that point. Um, they didn't tell you if you got in or not. I was actually at a P&E event, and they were like, oh, well, well, you didn't get in this year. And I was like, oh, man, wow. this sucks. I mean, I didn't get in. I was on the final ballot, this, that, and the other. And um, I don't know who it was, but some wise lady came up and told me, she goes, you know, football is what you did. It's not who you are. And wow. it doesn't define you of who you're going to be and what you've already accomplished. And when she said that to me, I was like, Man, I can look at the whole different way mm -hmm. of life as just saying, you know, it's what I did, it's what I was, but it's not who I'm going to be in the future. Right. And so it just sort of enlightened me, but it was actually this event that sort of gave me that, hey, I want to try something else. I want to try something different. So every year I used to come back and bring something different to the P&E to see what I can, oh, let's see how that works with everybody else. And let's see if everybody likes it here. I know I can do yeah. it anywhere else. Yeah. So it's sort of that testing ground. And that's what you like about it, getting the opportunity to make it your testing ground. That is so good. The fact that that's what P&E does, mm -hmm. you know, introduces the possibility of the next chapter. Yeah. That's what the, this event is like an incubator. Oh, yeah, that's, it you is. Know, it, it's designed to show people the possibility and then nurture them at the seed because sometimes the seed happens here yeah. and nurture that seed in this environment so that when they leave here they can go out and do the next thing so what is that what are you here doing now well here i'm actually bringing i have 68 inside sports mm -hmm. it's a fitness and wellness company um, we first started off we have 120,000 square foot of training in kansas city wow. And that's sort of transitioning. So it's yes. transitioning itself yes. um, because I've actually brought two medical devices here, and it's actually going to transition from being 120,000 square foot of training probably into more of a medical-derived uh, health and wellness point system for people to get healthy on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. And so that's going to be what's really unique is watching it grow and watching the different pieces of it. And one of them is a uh, basically a medical device that can monitor your body from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you could get a 
a score on your body every six months on how well you're doing. Wow. And you could actually do that. And then after that, the other one is actually more of a blood flow thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, blood is the key. And I call, this is what we call cellular health. Yes. And so what I'm creating is the best possibility for you to have the best cellular health you can have on a day-to-day -day basis. That is awesome. <laughs> and for you, doing this work as an athlete, you get to talk about not just being healthy for the sake of playing the game, but being healthy to live a richer and fuller it, life. It's all about life. It, right. You know, because right. when I got done, I was done playing. Um, everything hurt. It was sore. I was beat up. I was mad half the time because I was sore and beat up. So I was like, how do I fix this? How do I figure this out? How do yeah. I fix this? So a couple of ladies that, you know, said, hey, I found the fountain of youth. And I said, yeah, right. Show me. Bring it. So they brought this thing to me. And I was like, oh, wow, this thing works. It's unbelievable what it does. And I said, what else out there is that I don't know? And I own a fitness center. So how do I not know all yeah. these little nuances of new things that are out yeah. there? So at that point, I started doing research and finding all the new little gadgets and new things that work real well. Um, and I actually went through, through a whole transformation. So I went to a plant-based diet. I lost 90 pounds. Wow. Um, and doing so, all the medical issues I had all disappeared. And it all came from food, yeah. just eating normal, regular food, just the right stuff at yeah. the right time. But then the medical vice kicked it in mm -hmm. and just made it that much easier. Mm -hmm. But it was the proof in the pudding of this medical device led me to think, there's something out there that's natural yeah. that helps you get better. And so then I was like, I need to find the best way to be able to monitor it, see how mm -hmm. it works, and now give it back to the world. Let everybody else learn what it's about. So that's sort of where I'm here is to tell people that, hey, there is better things. And I'm not saying what I do is perfect for everybody because mm -hmm. everybody's built differently. We have the same similar DNA, but it's not the exact same. It's not built the same. So there's little nuances that work for me that might not work for you, but you actually have to be able to do the research on your own to find out what's going to actually make you feel better every day, day in and day out. Right. So that's sort of the process. That is, that is so good. How important is it for you having that experience, being a player, being successful in the league, to be able to be in a space where you get to speak to, because today we had high school athletes, mm -hmm. and over the course of these three days, we'll have athletes that are trying to get in the league, maybe you know looking forward to the next draft, maybe playing first year, second year, third year. How important is it to you to kind of be able to mentor them, even if it's a five minute conversation, mm -hmm. but to be able to share some of your life experience with the hopes of, introducing something new or new mindset, new ways of thinking about what they could be even after they're done playing? Well, I think some of that comes with pre-planning. You know, you also got to look at it and go, okay, what are you going to do if you if tomorrow changes? What are you going to do if, if this doesn't come to fruition? Right. And that's the hard part because that becomes that reality. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, as being a professional athlete, you have to tune a lot of that out and go, I can do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to give up this for that. Yeah. And, and it's hard. It's hard for people to go, look, I'm going to give up having a thousand friends for the two that's going to work out with me every yes. day, for yes. the one that's going to do this, the, you know, or the teacher that's going to spend extra time helping me get the grades I need to get to get to the next level. And those are the things you have to give and get to get there. And I think that's the hard question within itself. What are you willing to give to get where you are, but also what's the plan when you're done? Because none of us have that plan because, hey, I'm going to play football forever. I'm going to be a professional athlete forever. But then when I got to a point when I was done, I was going, I was pretty good at what I did, mm -hmm. and I was trying to be the best I could be. Why can't I be that for my health? Yes. Why can't I be that for other people? So that's where you get to that point where you're trying to build that within everybody's sort of structure. And most people go, well, I can't do what you do. I can't eat the way you do. It's like, I'm not asking you to be me. I'm just asking you to be the best you can be, yes. and that's it. So, you know, I sort of use this premise of, you know, you uh, work towards perfection to, to reach excellence. So if you can do that, then you can be the best person you can be, regardless of how you get there, because yeah. there is no perfect path. It's just being on the path. And moving forward. <laughs> exactly. And many, like, I, I have a hashtag that I use a lot, baby steps to greatness. Mm -hmm. It's an everyday thing. Every yeah. single day yeah. is one little step. Yeah. And, but you know what the end goal is. And then, of course, once you achieve that goal, set a new goal. Oh, you and have to. And that, too. Yeah, you that's, have to. That is that's so good. Yeah, and that's what, so. that's what I love about it is the simple fact of it is it's making little goals, and then you go yes. from there. And, you know, I try to get to a point where I never have someone else that, that can make better goals than what I can make for myself right. because then I never disappoint anyone else but me. 
and I'm the most oh important gosh. person. Good. So that's sort of, you know, where you're going, hey, I'm going to set this goal. And he was like, oh, well, why don't you set it for me? I was like, wait a minute. Wait, I got to set it for me. Right. Because if I don't set it for me, then, and then my goal ain't higher than your goal, then something's wrong. Right. Which was interesting because when I was a younger kid, I had a friend of mine that would always sort of force me to sort of test myself. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that would test me a little further. And then it became a habit. So then you just start testing yourself from yeah. that point yeah. of like, ooh, can I lift that weight? Hey, can I run that far? Hey, can I do? So then you start testing yourself. And until you do that, you'll never get better. You'll never force yourself to the edge. And that's what you have to do. I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying you've got to challenge yourself and understand that your acceptance is just as important, not, I should say, just as important to yourself than it is for somebody else. And that's the hard part. Right. Yeah. So good. So here's the million dollar question. Yeah. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? The Chiefs. <laughs> Chief's going to win the Super Somehow, Bowl. Somehow, I knew he was going to say that. Uh, you well, know, I, I did work for him for 14 <laughs> I know, I know. years, you know, so, yeah. you know. I kind of figured you would say that. Thank you, Will, thank you so much. No this problem. This has been a good, this has been good. No problem. I, again, you are, you probably embody the mission of P&E. I, I don't even probably, you do. That is, you went through that transition. And you, rec you recognize you had that light bulb moment at a P and E, which is so rich. I can't even oh, it stand was, it. Like that it is was, so good. It was awesome. And just the fact that you you continue to come and show up and represent your next chapter, and then just standing and being that example of of what's possible after the game. I think that is so good. Well, so good. And as I say, since I've been here so long, that means you still understand. I'm still transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Still on the journey. Still every the every journey. year I'm bringing so something good. else like, oh, so let's good. try this. Hey, let's try that. Hey, and let's the, do this. Which is what you said, like the yeah. constantly challenging it yourself. Is. And, and I think that's so good because we surprise ourselves by what we can actually do. But I think a lot of people operate in fear and they don't even want to try. Yeah. Fear of failing, fear of not and, knowing and what's going to really happen. And it's really that fear of wow, if I actually show somebody I can do this, I have to repeat it plus get better. <laughs> that means I got to do That's it over and over and over exactly. again. And I don't exactly. want to do that. I just want that one time or that flash and then let it be like that. Yeah. Yeah. So good. good. I could talk to you all day. <laughs> well, thanks this for having me. good. I Thank appreciate you so it. much. No problem. Thank you for being here. Where can our viewers find out more about the business and, of course, follow along, well, especially for what your next you challenge can, is. You can easily go to willshields.com, and basically we start there. It's sort of like we call it the umbrella, mm -hmm. and everything builds off of it. So we have our foundation that works for battered, abused women and children, and then we go from there with the businesses and different yeah. things that we're venturing in. And we try to keep it fresh, keep it fresh, keep it moving, and keep keep people learning new things. Businesses. Yes. Plural. Yes, most I like definitely. That. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Will. No I problem. appreciate you. Thank you all for tuning in. Will Shields, Hall of Famer, he got the Chiefs for the win, you all. If you are not already following the Player Network and Event page, I encourage you to do so. Check out Will, WillShields.com. He continues to transition. He continues to challenge himself. And that right there is a lesson for somebody, whether you are an athlete or not. That's a life lesson. And you heard it from Will. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, we will see you in our next broadcast.